What's up guys? I hope you all are doing fantastic. As you can tell by the title of the video, we're going to be turning this log into a cedar table today. Um, basically, I'm just going to go through the process that I did to make the table. First off, I bought this little chainsaw attachment and basically it allows you to mill your own lumber with the attachment. Um, all you have to do really is attach a 2x6 to the top of the log as you see here and attach the chainsaw attachment to the bar and uh, basically I mean you can see how it works right here you basically just tilt the chainsaw and drag it back along the 2x6 and as you do it cuts into the log that you're wanting to mill and you can just move it over every time you make a pass through it and make however thick or however thin of boards with the live edge that you want. As you can see, the boards are pretty roughly milled, so um, that's due to the chainsaw. So what we need to do is send it through the planer a couple times just to get it nice, flat, and smooth. I ended up planing the boards down to about two inches, roughly. Look at all those wood chips, Bo! Next we have to cut off the live edge off of the tabletop because we're going to have to glue the two pieces together because I couldn't find a log that was wide enough. So ultimately we're going to end up with two pieces that equal an overall width of 16 and a half inches. Um, and a length of 31 and a half inches. Always remember to be safe. Don't want to cut off any fingers. Like I said earlier, now that we have our two slabs that uh, combine make an overall width of 16 and a half inches and an overall length of 31 and a half inches, it's time to do the glue up. So basically I'm using my high tech, very expensive uh, wood glue spreader, aka my finger. <laughs> but no, for real, you don't even need one of those. Finger works just, just fine. You want to tighten it to the point to where a little bit of glue squeezes out, but not too much. And I ended up realizing that the pipe clamps that I was using were a little bit big for this purpose. So off camera, I decided to switch over to the F clamps that you see now. On to the next order of business which is chiseling away this little dried up glue strip that we got here and sanding away at the remaining microscopic particles that you could see but well, you can't see to the eye but whenever you poly it or stain it it'll draw out the, the wood glue and you, you'd be able to see it can't 
forget about the edges. I'd hate to have somebody fall and you know, bust their face open on a corner. That wouldn't be very much fun. I first started sanding with 80 grit sandpaper and moved on to 120 grit and then finally finished it up by hand with 220 grit as you see here. Now that the tabletop is pretty much finished, it's time to cut the posts to their desired length, which in this case is about 18 inches. And the diameter of the post is about three inches. Um, we're gonna need a total of four of these, so I'm just gonna cut them up real quick. Time to debark them. Y'all listen to this. It's satisfying. Didn't that just satisfy your soul? Next we're going to be making castle joints out of the posts. So basically, you just draw a plus on there. That's the thickness of what the material that you're going to be using, which in our case is one by threes. So three quarters of an inch is the width of the cross. And yes, my skill saw blade is very dull. I need a new one. Heck, I need a whole new skill saw. Once you've made the cuts, it's time to chisel out the middle. Since this is cedar wood, this is a lot tougher than it looks. Cedar is naturally fibrous and stringy, so it doesn't want to just break off with ease. But that's no match for old B-Rex. Next I'll be cutting the frame for the tabletop that sits inside the castle joints on the posts. Um, this is a little trick that I found out is once you make a cut, lay it right on your next piece that you're going to cut. That way it ensures that both cuts are equal. The top frame sides were cut at um, 13 and a half inches and the tabletop front and back pieces were cut at 28 and a half inches for anyone wondering. Next I use my jigsaw to cut out the notches where the two boards are going to interlock inside the castle joint. And then you just chisel it out, simple as that. Like the straight cuts, you can also trace notches out on the next piece that you want to cut, so that way your cuts line up perfectly. I decided to clamp it down because I only have two hands, and you know, I kind of value my fingers, you know, just a little bit though. Bada bing, bada boom, the notches are done. Time to put them together.
Here comes the fun part, lining all these castle joints up. <laughs> it's a really, really big pain in the butt, but I think the joint looks really good and it's pretty sturdy, so. I put the longer pieces with the gap facing upwards and the shorter pieces with the gap facing downwards. That way they interlock on each other. I forgot to mention I also put wood glue down in these joints before putting the pieces in. And I tacked it in a couple times with the air nailer just to be safe. Next it's time to measure the frame for the bottom shelf. I cut the bottom shelf sides to about seven and a half inches and the bottom shelf front and back pieces to about 24 and three quarter inches. Here is my El Cheapo pocket hole jig that works just fine. I got it off of Amazon for about 20 bucks and it works just as good as a Craig. We're going to put pocket holes on both sides. For this project, I used inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. You can pick them up at any hardware store. Time for the front and back pieces. And like I said earlier, I cut those to 24 and 3 quarter inches. We're going to pocket hole these boards as well, but it's important to note that you need to set your jig a little bit off centered so that whenever you screw them together, your screws don't collide with the screws of the side pieces that we just put on. For this project, I just used Type Bond 2 premium wood glue. Um, that's probably like the middle ground. It didn't really need Type Bond 3 since it's not going to be out in the weather exposed to the elements. And if you play your cards right, whenever you screw into the pocket holes, you shouldn't hit your other screws. For the bottom shelf, I just cut a thin piece of cedar uh, and kept the live edge on it just to give it some char character um, but I cut it just to fit the bottom shelf had to knock out a little bit on the edge Yay! Sanding, my absolute favorite! Now that all that sanding's over with, 
I get my router and I set it to an eighth of an inch and cut out little spaces for my figure eight tabletop fasteners to sit down into. I only end up cutting about six of these, two on the longer sides and one on the shorter sides. These little figure eight tabletop fasteners are actually pretty cool. You just screw them into the frame and then flip the frame over on top of the tabletop and screw it into the tabletop. This allows you to be able to attach the tabletop to the frame without actually having to drill through the tabletop to get to the frame. I know that probably sounds like a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, but you get the picture. See, wasn't that just freaking awesome? Now that all the hard work's finished, time to poly it. I use the Minwax water-based poly acrylic. Um, I use the semi-gloss for this project. I can't really tell that much of a difference anyways. They should call me Danielson. Mr. Miyagi be teaching me how to, how to wax on, wax off, paint the fence. You know what I'm saying? That was a uh, Karate Kid reference for anyone that is uncultured out there. Alright, there it is in all its glory. Hope you guys liked the build. It was a lot of fun, but it was also a lot of time and patience that went into this project. But it was worth it. Okay, here it is. In the house. Do you like it? Lies. <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, it's done. It's nice and slick. She's got her little, her little stuff on here, her little coasters and stuff. Got a little book down here on her bookshelf. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of work went into this, but seeing her face on Christmas kind of made it worth it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully y'all enjoyed the video, and if y'all want to build something similar, now you know how. It's not that complicated, it just takes time and knowledge and tools, lots of tools. Alright, Broken Boys Bushcraft. Yeah, but she said. Uh -huh. <laughs>